today. Welcome back to News Now. Guam police are investigating after shots were fired on Route 4 yesterday afternoon. GPD spokesman officer AJ Balahaja says the incident occurred as two vehicles were racing from Shine Mart in Ordot up towards Mai Mai Road in Chalampago. According to Balahaja, a passenger in one of the vehicles involved shot towards the other vehicle. No other details were released, but Balahaja says an investigation has been launched. A submarine that was stuck in Guam's port since June 21st had a tiny leak in its nuclear propulsion system, but Navy officials say the leak did not get out into the environment. The USS Jefferson City left Guam on Saturday, November the 15th, after being stuck in port since the summer due to a tiny leak of coolant water in its nuclear propulsion system. According to Pacific Submarine Force Commander Brooke DeWalt, no radiation leaked out into the environment. Commander DeWalt says the leak was contained inside the submarine and within its propulsion plant compartment. He says the leak was so small it was difficult for the crew to determine where it was coming from. DeWalt says the leak manifested itself with a tiny amount of steam that condensed on the equipment. He adds that very sensitive instruments were brought in to determine the source of the leak. DeWalt says that the leak posed no threat to the crew, no threat to the environment, and no threat to the general population. He says the coolant contains only trace amounts of radioactivity. Commander DeWalt says they test their submarine for radioactivity regularly and all water in their system is accounted for very specifically. As of Friday, the USS Jefferson City was en route to Pearl Harbor to complete repairs to its propulsion system and complete some other regularly scheduled maintenance. Well, teams tested their teamwork and strength in the Guam Fire Department's first ever Fireman's Pool at the Aganya Shopping Center on Saturday. It was a family fun event with a bunch of activities from fire hose pool for the kids, a rock climbing wall, and even a zip line. It was not just fun, but educational too. GFD officers had a hospitality tent where residents learned about fire safety and prevention. They also had a static display where children had a chance to climb the fire truck, wear a firefighter suit, and be a firefighter for a day. This is all uh, an effort to just bring uh, uh, to the community a little bit of what we do and give them a chance to uh, play with the fire truck. Proceeds of the first annual fireman pool go towards GFD for training, equipment, and their fallen heroes. Speaker Judy Wanpat held a roundtable discussion with DOE officials and GPD to discuss the recent rash of fights that DOE students have been recording and posting on social media. The speaker began by reminding everyone about the death of Jeremy Newby several years ago due to a fight at Southern High. It was nearly eight years ago after our community was shaken by Jeremy's death, our children continued to engage in extremely violent fights. Over the past few months, we have seen these fights on videos that went viral on the internet, garnering thousands of likes and hits on social media. Speaker Judy Wanpat said she was appalled by the rage she saw in the video of a fight at Season High in which a boy repeatedly slams a girl's head on the ground. DOE Superintendent John Fernandez says he and his administrators feel a moral obligation to address these fights even if some of them are happening off campus. I've asked my staff to look at the data from the past few months just to kind of give us some perspective. And from this time period, we saw approximately 147 students disciplined for uh, offenses uh, related to fighting, rioting, and assault. Now this represents 1.5% uh, of our total high school student enrollment. What it tells me is that, you know, over 98% of our students are not engaged in these activities. That they are not, um, at this stage, going into these campuses without that, rec with that reckless abandon, without that respect for, uh, you know, the, the, the rules and norms and expectations that we all have for them. But we do have a number of students, even as small as that, that number may be, who when they engage in these types of incidents, those incidents can turn into tragedies. Fernandez was at Tizen High this morning, where he spoke to the principal and a couple of students. The feeling there is, you know, we're safe, it, it happened, we're embarrassed, we, we just started out, we are there, the morale on the campus is low, um, and we just need to know what we can do to turn this around, to talk to our fellow students, to talk about 
respect for each other, ways to behave, whatever. All right, and we have with us Rebecca Kim with weather. First time going on live. It's, I'm pretty nervous, but pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Are you fine. Me? All right, so it is Thanksgiving that's coming up. So, you know, we get to think about it's turkey season, Black Friday and all that, but mm -hmm. it also marks the beginning of dry season as well as end of rainy season. So talking about tonight's weather, a weak disturbance is actually pr approaching the Marianas, and the National Weather Service says mm. that only a small impact. Impact is quite minimal. In fact, we are only looking at isolated showers and only 20% chance of rain, which is quite usual. So not much impact on that. And we cannot forget about Thanksgiving weather. <laughs> so it's going to be quite cool and nice because a dry trade wind condition will continue. But the problem actually starts on Thursday night. So there is a tropical disturbance located in south of the Marianas and it is moving towards us. So NWS says that it might come and you know give us some effect on maybe Friday. Friday. Black a Friday. Friday. A little bit of rain. Uh -oh. A little bit of rain. <laughs> but um, NWS also says that it might be just concentrated only to the south of Guam. But, you know, they still do not rule out the possibility of scattered showers all over Guam as well as isolated showers all the way up to CNMI. Yeah, and let me show you this picture right here. Um, so expect partly cloudy skies tonight and mostly sunny tomorrow and partly cloudy on Wednesday. And as you see, the shower coverage remains all isolated. East winds 5 to 15 tonight going up to 20 tomorrow and on Wednesday it will turn north eastwards and highs go 89 degrees and lows near 77 degrees Hoo -hoo. All right. yeah oh, so exciting. it is exciting so thanksgiving. So, so thanksgiving during the day maybe not so much rain but at night hopefully is when, it should be dry yeah. right yeah but hopefully the turkey's not dry just oh. the weather oh perfect <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't rain gravy on friday <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm constantly getting used to Clint's jokes. <laughs> I'm getting used to them too. <laughs> to who? <laughs> to my own jokes. So okay. I don't get my own jokes. So I don't even know why you guys are laughing. <laughs> this is funny anyway. <laughs> All right, well. All right, well, what? that's it for the weather report. Yes. Thank you very much, Rebecca, for the live weather report. It was Thank awesome. You. you did great. You did not seem nervous. Yeah. <laughs> what nervous are you your heart is all pounding. You can hear it. Oh, no, no, no. You <laughs> pull it off so well. All right, well, stay tuned. We'll be back with more after this.